Welcome back to the Pens World Festival Day 2. It's now our third session of the day. Up next, we have John Glasgow, who is the co-founder and ECD of global design agency Vault 49. John is committed to encouraging cultural diversity within the design industry. John is super cool. He pushes boundaries and he has a huge positive energy. We're delighted for him to join us today. Following John's presentation, we'll be asking your questions, so please type them in the Q&A box below. When you ask your questions, they can be upvoted and the best ones will be asked at the end, so make sure you get involved. Post on social media using at Pentwards or the hashtag Pentwards Festival. So without further ado, let's give a huge round of applause to John Glasgow. Come on, John. All right, let me share my screen, thank you. Sort it. Give me a moment. This uh, sounds quite tricky. All right. Can you see my screen all right? We can indeed, John. Good luck. Awesome. Hi, my name is John Glasgow. I'm ECD and co-founder of Vault 49, a design agency with studios in both London and New York. I currently live and work out of the New York studio, which you can see behind me today, alongside my team and probably some screen print equipment. So today I want to talk about black people and why black people belong in our industry. I will cover how I got into this industry, all the twists and turns that I took to get here, and some of the lucky breaks. But I want to start off with something a little bit more provocative. In this moment, I am being asked to write multiple articles for leading creative magazines and editorials on being black. I'm being asked to talk at art schools to students, at universities as well, on the black experience of being in this industry. And I've been invited to pitch on projects as a black leader. And today I'm presenting at the Pent Awards. I think a lot of black people in any industry, in any senior position, are probably asking themselves this same question. Because all of a sudden, we are the center of attention. The Pent Awards is the most prestigious awarding body, and I have been invited to talk to their audience. And this is a huge achievement for me. But I'm under no illusion that it's because of the color of my skin. So what do I do in this moment? These are the kind of questions I've been asking myself. This is a huge platform and a huge opportunity for me to talk about how few black people there are in our industry. It's also an opportunity for me to share my journey, my voice on being a black creative and also being a black co-owner of a global agency with 20 years experience. So how do we inspire more black people into our industry? I think I'll start off with talking about my journey into the industry. It's not, it wasn't the most kind of direct and traditional way to get into this industry. 20 years ago, there were no black Milton Glaziers, there were no black Roy Lichtensteins or no black Gustav Klintz, there were no black agencies like Pentagram. And for me, there were no black creative leaders in the industry that I was aware of that could inspire me or I could be to aspire to become. So with no black mentors, I had to navigate a system that no one prepared me for. It was difficult to picture myself as a black designer in a predominantly white space. When I looked at the top of the industry, there was no one who looked like me leading the way. And in truth, it's uncommon for a black man or a black woman to own an agency. I honestly didn't know what I was getting myself into, if it would lead to anything um, worthwhile, but I continued blindly because of my passion for creativity and design. And this forced me to find my own way and to start my own business at college without any experience. 
But there's one thing I do remember from back then, and unfortunately it's the same today. Every time I would walk into an ad agency, any time I would walk into a, a design studio, if I would sit down with brand managers or clients, I would always, always say the same words to me, to myself. Where are all the black designers? Where are all the black strategists? Where are all the black leaders? And where are all the black people? For me, it was very intimidating to present in a room for the well-educated, rich white people. I was full of fear. And don't get me wrong, every time uh, you present, especially in the beginning, right, you, you present to a team, you want to present your ideas through on a pitch. But when there's no allies in the room with you, when there's no one with similar experiences, and no one who can understand your references, that imposter syndrome hits a new level. And again, I only think it was due to my love and passion for creativity and design. It helped me push my way through and make a career in this industry. So how did I make it? Originally, I started off as a street artist alongside my business partner, Jonathan Kenyon, who I met in the Springbridge Studios of London. Back then, we would sell thousands of screen prints at five pounds a pop, and it made us enough money to rent our own screen print studio and buy our own screen printing equipment. We would print hundreds and hundreds of designs during the day onto newsprint, and at night, night after night, we would fly posters all around the streets of London. And there were no contact details, there were no website details to share, because it was purely for the love of it. It was for our love of creativity, our love of design. We want to get our work up large and we want people to see it and react to it. And our lucky break came one night outside of a, a chip shop in Farringdon Road, London. It was about 3 a.m. We had taken a break from flight postering. We both had a bag of chips each and directly next to this chip shop was a derelict looking building. So we did what we did. We fly closer from floor to ceiling. We covered all of the windows and all of the doors. And two days later, I got a call. And on the other side of that line was Days of Confused magazine. They had told me that following morning, after we fly closer to their building, they had to cut their way to get into their building. They wanted to know who were the artists behind this. And they invited us into their space. They wanted us to do what we did on the outside of the building, on the inside of the building. That led to multiple features in their magazine, and that led to a whole bunch of commissions. And it was that, in that spontaneous moment, that sparked the birth of Vault 49 for two 23-year-olds who had just recently graduated college. Our London walls soon became the alleyways of New York City. We went from an artist duo in London to an artist collective in New York. And now we have evolved into a brand experience and packaging experts over the course of almost 20 years. So now I'm going to share with you a short video, maybe two minutes long, of who we are today.
So at the start of my career, the only way I knew how to how to get people to notice me was to be super disruptive and fly this all, all across their building so they couldn't ignore me. But how have things improved for black creatives over the last 20 years? How have the next generation of black creatives made it into our industry? Where are the next generation of black creative leaders? So how have things changed? Honestly, the truth is, they've only changed a little bit. Even the organizer who invited me to join the Pen Awards and present to you today at this festival told me that they spent four hours looking for black creatives who could fit the Pen Awards criteria for next year's judging. And the only person they came across was me. That's crazy. It shouldn't have to be so difficult to make it in this industry as a black designer and you shouldn't have to be such a unicorn or so unique to find your way in this industry as a black person. So here today, it's time to raise our voice. I honestly believe that everyone today on this call wants to make a difference for black creators in our industry. And as a black ECD, I have to use this platform to raise my voice to the Pent Awards audience. Right now, I can talk to my peers and I can talk to clients. And to the Pent Awards, I would like to say I'm very grateful for this opportunity and this platform you've given me to talk about my experience and share my voice. Adam, you might kill me, I might be jumping the gun here, but to be invited to be a Pent Awards judge at the 2021 is a huge achievement for me. And I'm very kind of proud and honored to be invited. But to be the first black judge, as I understand, honestly, it's about time. To the clients and brand managers on this call, you can do more, a lot more. You can talk to your employees and your consumer base. You can use your voice and choose to work with agencies that practice diversity. And that will make a real change. Clients, week in, week out, if you're sitting down with your agency partners, and every time you walk into the room, there are no people of color in that room, you can choose to spend your money with agencies that practice diversity. Or you can demand that your agency partners put, into, put in place a diversity plan and hold them accountable to it setting key milestones and deadlines for them to meet that criteria. Clients, you have that power. Watch how quickly the industry will change overnight for all of these big agencies that don't practice diversity. Money talks, and as soon as you stop spending your money with these non-diverse agencies, they will quickly address this issue. Or I should change that today or quickly try and address this issue because the sad reality is most of these agencies, agencies that truly want to make change and be more diverse, they will struggle to meet their full diversity targets because there are not enough black designers, black strategists, black creatives out there, excuse me, for people to hire. And that's the sad truth. So today I'm raising my voice. My clients are starting to raise their voice. And I believe the creative industry are now raising their voice. But who are listening? These are the young black people, and these are the people we should be talking to. The daring young black creatives and the daring young black students. It's important that we don't just look at black students who have made it into our schools and universities. Yes, they're going to need our support if they are to succeed. But we also need to look at the young black creatives who don't even understand that this industry exists. 
because you won't find them in art schools and you won't find them in universities. We have to plant that seed early in their minds, in high school level. We also need to think about the black creatives who want to get into this industry, who can't afford to get into this industry and can't afford to do a degree course. We need to get more black people into design education so that they can become the future black leaders in our industry. For the past seven years, Vault 49 had partnered with Jay-Z's Sean Carter Foundation and President Obama's My Brother Keeper, alongside Lawrence Latte and Question Media to develop an exchange program working with young students from black and low-income environments, the first in their families to attend universities, and giving them the opportunity to travel back and forth between New York and London experience working out of a New York studio and a London studio to broaden their creative experiences and broaden their creative connections. But most importantly, we are showing them that they matter. That there are people who believe that this industry would benefit from their voices and their experiences. So as we look to inspire positive change, we can all accept that it's time to raise our voices because it's vital that black creatives, black strategists, black client service professionals can look to the top of this industry and see people who look like them leading the way. Again, clients, you can force change on these agencies. All of these big established agencies are not stepping up to meet the challenge. So to the clients, you can force that change from above. If you start to insist to work with agencies that represent your audience and your consumer base. Companies need to show preference to hiring diverse agencies and in turn benefit from all they have to offer. Vault 49 and our peers on this call must inspire young black people to aim high. We need to reach black people in high schools, not just universities. We need to listen to black people. We need to hire black people and we must promote black people into senior roles. My experience and that of others who have come from different backgrounds, cultures and influences can not only help the design world, but we can also enrich it. Now is the time for change, and now is the time to change the status quo and do things differently. Because you don't need to look a certain way and you don't need to talk a certain way to lead the way. I am a black man leading a global agency, and you belong here too. So thank you for joining me for my presentation. Thanks again for the Pentawars who invited me here. I hope there's been some inspiring nuggets in here as well. And thank you for letting me share my, uh, my experiences. Thank you so much, John, for your amazing presentation. And you know what? You hit the nail on the head. It is time. This is the time now. Um, I'm delighted you're joining our jury. Um, I couldn't think of anyone else better. And, you know, we appreciate your time and guidance in this subject, which is really important to you. And I'm glad we've been able to share this with our community. Um, I just think it's the right time. And you're right. Everything you said, I agree. So, with that said, should we look at some questions? Yeah, let's do it. Let's have a quick... Can I just say, Adam, every time I speak to you, you, uh, you made me miss London, hearing your uh, East London accent, I tell you. <laughs> well, I, we, we had a call before, didn't we? And I'm, I'm pretty jealous that you're based in New York. That was always a dream of mine. Um, but yeah, when we, you know, when we, we always talk, we've got a good connection, both being Londoners, but you're from uh, the posh part of London, I'm from the, the other part. <laughs> West London, yeah. <laughs> so, a um, couple of questions, John. Um, the first one is, 
What advice would you give to someone starting their very own design agency? I think you've got, you have to be brave. Uh, I think you have to commit. Obviously, you have to work hard. But believe in yourself, believe in your ability, perfect your craft, push yourself, experiment, keep experimenting, you'll get noticed. Um, if you're finding that you're, you know, like my journey, you have to be disruptive. Think of unique ways of being disruptive as well. Keep just, yeah, keep pushing and driving because you can make it. Like I said, I had no dreams of starting my own company. I kind of just fell into this, um, into this uh, position I am now as well. And uh, yeah, I think even now, I think to myself, even now, um, you know, like many people, I can suffer from imposter syndrome. Now I've just been like, look, I'm living in New York and running a design agency and stuff. And yeah, it's, it's, it's something that you, if you work harder, you can really uh, achieve it. Great, great. We've got some more questions. Uh, here we go. Uh, just touching on again with your initiatives, could you tell us about um, a bit more on the initiatives and how young black creators can get involved and uh, maybe watching now? Yes, definitely. So obviously it came about because of my experience through universities uh, as well. And I didn't have the most best experience in universities in terms of uh, grades. Uh, the work I was doing was amazing and it was disruptive and it got noticed, but in terms of grace, so kind of fast forward to maybe like 10 years ago, I was frustrated and I wanted to do more. And I was introduced to someone called Lawrence Latte, who at the time was uh, working on an exchange program with Sean Carter's uh, Jay-Z, um, his um, kind of charity arm of, of his company. So I jumped on board and helped facilitate that from a design point of view, offering up my time and my team's time and our facilities. And how that's run is uh, Lawrence works at um, universities, he gathers students from, from universities in London, the Sean Carter Foundation gathers students from a, a US and a New York point of view as well. So if you're in contact with those two platforms, the program's called the Nylon Platform as well, um, which if you Google that online, through the UAL, you'll find those details. Um, he, Lawrence currently works at uh, Ravensbourne at the moment as well. It would be easy to be able to find him online. But that's that's you know that's one option. But there's you know based on current experiences now, there's a lot more options. I'm doing a lot more at the moment because I'm frustrated that I don't get enough black applicants into Vault Forty Nine. So I'm giving up my time now to people of color who apply for Vault 49. I engage with them directly. I speak to them, I review their portfolio, and I try to give them advice. And I'm trying to make it a sustained thing as well. I'm expanding their, that invitation to my wider team as well. So if someone comes to me and they want to be a strategist, I'm introducing them to the strategy director at our company. If they want to be an illustrator, I introduce them to an illustrator at our company. I'm trying to create little mentorships and stuff like that. So I think now, if you're a young black creative or you're a creative looking to get into this industry, I think now is the time to just start peppering and asking people. If you can't find a program, go direct to people because I think on the back of COVID, on the back of Black Lives Matter, people are, there's a lot of humanity it's a beautiful humanity moment and people want to want to do more and want to help out more brilliant brilliant we've got time for one more question um it's from natasha um 100 agreeing with you john do you believe there is a difference in the way london and new york create opportunities for black creatives yes yes and no <laughs> this is a tricky one um i'll try and be short with it I think growing up uh, in the UK and then becoming a designer, I feel like uh, back then, and this is, I'm talking the early, late 90s, early 2000s, uh, my experience it was London felt very limited. Uh, and for anyone, I think, be they black or, or anyone, looking into New York, right? We grew up being, or looking into the US, we grew up on American culture, through movies, through music, through sports, through entertainment, right? We just, it was a very inspirational um, culture. 
So as a black um, person growing up into design, I felt that the design industry back then was very limited. So New York felt like a better opportunity for me. It felt like they embraced me more just from my experiences as a black um, person from London. And when I moved to New York, there was a lot of kind of smoke and mirrors. Because where you think that there's more opportunity, because you see more black representation embracing the black culture, as I said, leading movies and having uh, their own shows. Um, I almost felt like there was going to be more opportunities. And there is. You get brands out here who have the face of their brands, and they're white brands, and their face of their brands are black person. But that's in front of the camera. And I've been, um, you know, I went from the age of 19 being a mysterious young teenager, and then four years later being uh, going around all of these ad agencies, right? And I remember clearly, and it was during this presentation that it reminded me that when I started to, um, when I moved to New York when I was 24, and I'd only graduated maybe just over a year at that point, I was then propelled into these ad agencies, and I was thinking, it's New York, you know, it's this melting pot, there's a lot more black opportunities for black people in New York. But again, there was this moment, and I won't name the agency, the ad agency, because it was the same at every ad agency. But I went into that building, and I went up into the floors, and I looked out of the building from this, like, 10th floor down, and I could see, it was just this contradiction, I could see black people and hundreds of black people walking down the streets of New York, but when I entered that building, where were all the black people? So, yes, initially I felt there was more opportunity for black people in the US. But again, in front of the lens, you see more black people. But when you get behind the scenes, when you get in those meeting rooms, when you get behind the lens and work with those production companies, photographers, directors, unfortunately they're all white um, as well. So that's the challenge we face today. Great. I mean, thank you for being so honest. I mean, I can see that you've got to deal with running your own design agency and all of this. Um, and you're doing an amazing job to, you know, keep this going, getting the message across. Um, and for us, this is a sustained partnership. Uh, we, we, we are here as your platform and everybody else's platform. And um, I want to give you a round of applause for being so honest and sharing your presentation. Um, thank you again for this opportunity as well to be able to share my story. It's been amazing. It's, it's an honor to be associated with the Pen Awards as well. So thank you again. Thanks, John. So we have one more speaker session today, and it's our keynote speaker, Danielle Monti from Amazon. Please join us at 4.30 BST. For now, go and grab a coffee or a tea, get some of your work emails done, and we'll see you soon. Thanks, guys. Take care, John. Cheers. Bye-bye.